Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Courageous Self-Love Healing Circle Week 3. I'm Amelia Fortes, the host and facilitator of this circle, and we've got three other beautiful souls here live with us today. We've got Kat, we've got Gloria, and we've got Justin. We've got some masculine energy in here, so that's very exciting. And um, a lot of you will be joining on the recording. So thank you so much for being here. Um, just before I started recording, I kind of put a question out there. Um, I, I, wanted it, I wanted to give the group a chance to dictate what today's topic will be. I mean, I, I have already kind of what we're gonna do today, but I made it so that I can adjust it for whatever topic. And so, because what I noticed was like last week we talked about money and finances, or sorry, the first week we talked Thirdly. about money and finances. And then week two, we talked about dating and relationships. And that kind of came out organically because I, I, we talked about commitment. Like I had a like terrible Mercury retrograde day. And so I just kind of used that as inspiration for self-love. Um, Kat was like, everyone was part of that. <laughs> everyone knew the story. Um, mm -hmm. And so I kind of wanted to put it to you all. And before I started recording, I, I kind of got, I'm not sure from everyone. So what I think we'll do is we'll start with a um, therapeutic imagery journey, which is basically a form of hypnotherapy that um, it, it allows you to interact with the images of your subconscious mind um, so that some things can be revealed and come through. And I know that everyone here, well, actually, Gloria, I don't know where you stand on hypnotherapy, but I know that Kat and Justin are familiar with hypnotherapy, so they're cool with it. And Gloria, I think you've done hypnotherapy before. Yeah. So you're right. with it too, but just Absolutely. in case to those of you listening, because a lot of people still have like weird feelings about it. So I just want to like bust some myths, you know, hypnotherapy is not about like this crazy, weird magic spell thing. And, you know, it's not, there's no, I have no ability to like cast a spell on you and make you do anything you don't want to do. Right. You're not going like to talk a like a chicken. Exactly. Everybody uses that chicken. example, isn't it? I know. It's always, because like, that's what people think. Or like, that? Bark like Somebody a dog. must have done that. You know what? Somebody must have well, done that. Well, usually that's in like stage hypnotherapy, you know? Oh, oh all right. That's if right. If you've I never it, been right. on stage. Right. In Vegas, on Las Vegas, right? They exactly. Oh my God. So if you've never that's been that. on stage, like, no. You probably don't know that those people actually wanted to do those things for the purpose of entertainment. So there's there, there's nothing weird or voodoo-ish about it. So if no. you're listening, I just hope that that is good enough for you to just like, what it's going to feel like is guided it's meditation. And the reason why therapeutic imagery is a little bit different is because it's for the purpose of connecting with your subconscious mind for, for some sort of guidance. So I think we can do that, and then I want to hear from everyone what comes up for you, and then maybe that will let that dictate where we go in this session. So I'm taking a little bit of a risk here, just trying to play. Yeah. Like we're a small, intimate group, so let's see, let's see what we got. So all you have to do to kind of get settled in is just um, feel free to sit up in your seat and... and You'll, you can close your eyes right away if that feels safe to you, or you can just start with like a soft gaze, you know, like not looking at anything in particular, just like a soft gaze. And as you sit there, just go ahead and focus on the breath. And as you focus on the breath, let that be an indication to go within. And as you go within, if the eyes are still open, just let them blink naturally, but eventually at just the right moment, you'll know exactly when to let them float closed. And with the eyes closed now, just really focus on the breath going in and the breath going out. allowing any background sounds to just fade 
even deeper into the background where the background sounds even allow you to go just a little deeper. And starting at five down to zero, we go deeper and deeper. So starting at five, four, three, two, one, and zero is deep sleep. Each and every time I suggest the words deep sleep with your permission only for the purpose of hypnosis, the body goes to this depth or deeper and continues to relax. So now in this calm and peaceful state, just allow a sense of tranquility to come into the room and surround you. And feel that sense of peace, that calm serenity, starting from the top of the head, travel all the way down the body to the tips of the toes. Almost like a healing green light of love and peace. From the very top of the head, down the face and the back of the head, and as this green light passes through, just allowing it to remind the muscles to continue to relax. All tiny muscles, blood cells, tissues, fibers, bones, down the neck, shoulders, chest, upper back, middle back, lower back, all throughout the torso, in the front now, the chest and the belly, all throughout the solar plexus, down the arms and out the hands, all around the hips and down the legs, knees, calves, shins, ankles, and out through the feet and out through the toes and the soles of the feet. Now the entire body washed with a healing green light full of love and peace. And allowing this to take you even deeper. And in this state of deep tranquility, allow images of a safe place to emerge. Whether they're visual images, allow all senses to be heightened. Take notice of what is seen, heard, felt, any smells or tastes that come to mind. Get a sense of the temperature on the skin. Really allow this safe place to come alive. And just look around and notice some details about this safe place. And any background noises just continue to take you deeper. And naturally, a desire to take a seat in a specific spot in this place comes up. So find yourself walking to a specific spot in this place, a spot that makes good sense to take a seat. And as you take a seat, allow yourself to observe again this safe space from yet a new perspective. And see if there's anything new that can be noticed. And from this safe space, there's a sense of knowing that anything that has been bothering you or on the top of mind 
anything that has been keeping you from the self-love, the level of self-love that you truly desire is freely able to come up because in this safe place is where all things can be resolved. And so allow an image of something that has been, you've been curious about or wanting to go a little bit deeper about. Allow an image of that to come through. Whether it's dating and relationships or money and finances or something else. Allow that to come through. And when there's a sense of that image, just give me a nod. Okay. So take a moment to kind of converse with this image and have the image support you in articulating what it is you need support with today and what it is you want to discover and go deeper with in tonight's healing circle. And allow that guidance to come forward in whatever way feels right. And ask the image, is this the right thing to bring up today? And if you need any further support in articulating what it is, you can go ahead and ask for that support now. And then as you wrap up the conversation, just allow the image of this to gently float away, fade into the background, as the sense of the safe place you've put yourself heightens and brightens. And allow all the good, the positive, and the true from this experience allow all of that to come back with you into your conscious outer awake life. As we go just a little bit deeper at zero, and then one is a deep cleansing breath in. Two is remembering the seat you placed yourself on. Three is getting a sense of the room you placed yourself in. Four is a little more alert now. And five is eyes open, wide awake. One, two, three, four, five, eyes open, wide awake. One, two, three, four, five, eyes open, wide awake. And All right. thanks, bro. Okay, Justin was on the phone. <laughs> Gloria, are you back? Hang on. I'm unmuting everyone. Are you back? Is everyone yeah. back? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so I'm curious to hear, you know, what, what you experienced. Um, and anyone can go first. Um, well, I was in a flower field. And then when you asked, like a flower field on a sunny day, um, and when you asked what I could like work on, and you know this because I think I brought this up in, on the film shoot talk thing we did, but um, I was asking myself how important like recognition from others is in relation to self-love as I'm like, you know, working on my career and, and being more visible as like a, a social media presence or if you even want to call me an influencer or what, what that means. Um, yeah, because I, I hung out with this group recently to the gala that I went to for the first time hanging out with them and they were very first of all I think they're really like rich 
and they're like really financially well off and I don't normally hang out with people like that and the way they talked was very different Mm -hmm. and I was trying to process how I was reacting to that like I was like put off by you know the materialism and how like the entire six hours we were together they were just talking about like you know the next uh, like totally LA but also realizing that part of myself was like alert like drawn to that and also like put off and so I'm as I'm thinking about like what my goals are and claiming that I want to spread the message of self-love and like my work, mm-hmm. like, what that means to me. Cause I know, you know, fame is like a nice big shiny ball, but like, did I don't you know, feel un- all that is just like buzzing in my head. Kat, did you feel uncomfortable with them? I did because I was also trying to figure out what they want from me. And, um, and I felt like they were sizing me up cause I'm a makeup artist and I think they were, were sizing me up as a makeup artist but then it got kind of like sexual so I was just like what what do you want from me you know like do you want me to be in your your orgy do you want me to work on your shoot like do you think I'm like you or am I not like you so I was uncomfortable but yeah. I I overanalyze people I've been wrong there have been people who became my best friends who I thought were like horrible at first so I'm always aware of that but the topic of like fame Yeah, I was hearing a couple of themes, and so I wanted to maybe see what made sense, because there was the piece about fame and being an influencer and recognition. Mm -hmm. There was also a piece about money, though, Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's also a piece around what do people want from you. So maybe there is, you tell me, is there a way to weave all of that together, or is there like one of those that you'd want to focus on today? Um, you summarized it pretty well. So you said I mentioned fame recognition and what was the third one? Well, it was fame slash recognition and then money. And then the third one was like, like this anxiety of like, what do people want from me? Probably the third one. Okay. Yeah. What do people want? We talked from about me? money last week. The fame thing can wait, but I think that's really what's bothering me is not knowing what this group of people who seem very different from me financially and just how, how they carry themselves. Okay. Yeah, materialism? Is it, was it materialism? Were they, is that how that you felt? I that think it's were? a general, what I'm hearing is it's a general anxiety, like it's a general, like, I don't know how I fit in in this group. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like, they're, they're not the kind of people that just, you know, hang out. Like they see something of value to me. So I started doubting myself in and the, then, yeah. in what they wanted for me. And I was like, well, they're going to find out I'm not this like, fabulous makeup artist and they were putting down other makeup artists that I don't even know so I was just like if you're putting these people down I'm not I'm not going to be good enough and I'm like and I was like why am I even here and then just and it all came down to like this wouldn't affect me if how I felt about myself was solid yeah yeah like I don't really like them but I notice I care what they think so I was just like I thought I was past that would would community be a good word for this kind of challenge if you will as my topic yeah maybe community is not the right word but it's like because I feel like it's not just about this group because like you said you've been wrong like you've you tend to overanalyze people and and you've been wrong before so I'm wondering if there's it's not my question is is I don't think it's just about these people it's like there's something general like you said if if you're feeling solid about yourself then you wouldn't you probably wouldn't have these anxieties about who you yeah I mean, I definitely am trying to figure them out because there's this new group of people that are trying to like come into my life, I guess. But I know that ultimately how I feel, any insecurities that come up might be like uh, brought out by them, but it's me. So um, I just wrote down the word, Amelia, when you were talking trust. I'm wondering if it's a, if there's some of it is a trust issue because that could apply to um, how Kat feels with this particular group, but it also could apply to, you know, trusting ourselves to, when we are in, uh, maybe not in our comfort zone, trust ourselves that we're still going to be okay in a, in a situation. No where matter what situation. Yeah. Right, 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 right. That may, that resonates with me for sure. Cause I felt like the whole time, have you seen the movie Princess Diaries? Like I felt like oh, yeah. the main character, I was just like constantly like, I have to carry myself a certain way. Otherwise they're going to, they're going to realize I'm not like, okay. them. and then I was like, but if they do figure it out, 
that's fine, right? That's fine. I was like, I don't know, is it fine? Or is this my one shot at, you know, getting into this circle? And I was like, oh, I guess I care about that, you know? So I'm still like, ooh. Let's go with trust then, because it's not like, but you, and you kind of know, you can fill in all the blanks. Like, because trust means a lot of different, but like, let's go with trust as it relates to you and like yourself. Like you said, if you were, you, if you were solid with yourself, you probably wouldn't worry about these things so much. So it's like a trust in you that also relates to trusting other people, maybe? Yeah. Does that resonate? Trust in your judgment, your judgment. Yeah. Does that feel like a yeah. good... And, and we'll, I'm going to guide everyone through a journaling process to take it even deeper so we don't have to like nail it right now, but I want you to feel good about like the jumping off point. Okay. Does that feel good? Yeah. I just, I honestly, I mentally freaked out because I realized that I, I posted about this on my story and I'm like, what if they see this? But it's fine. Like, <laughs> I delete that from my story right now because he's been like internet stalking me. <laughs> it's happening in real time. <laughs> great. This is great. Real time healing happening. Um, but, but do you feel good with that? Like, and, and as we journal, we, let's see what comes up out of that. Can you repeat um, that? What is, what are we deciding on? Trust. In myself. Yeah. In yourself and also as it relates to other people, but you said it yourself. If you were solid in yourself, then this issue with others wouldn't be as much of an issue. Right. And I think that's what it, the lesson that came out of that. Cause yeah. Yeah. So it's like trust in yourself and then also as it relates to other people. So let's go with that. Um, Gloria, what came up for you? Like, what, did you see anything cool? Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, really what popped up is my little beach right here in Longboat Key. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm here for a month from, from the north. So I'm, I'm happy about being here because the, the weather is great and I'm doing fun things. And it's kind of a, a break from all my responsibilities. And so when I go over to the beach, what I like is I just kind of sit there and I listen to the waves and watch the waves and it's quiet. There's not a lot of people and I kind of watch the birds and it really gives me an opportunity to just kind of uh, unplug. So I, I find that e even when I'm on vacation, I wind up being very busy, you know, like I'm going to plays and I'm taking an art class and I ride my bike and I bring my dog to the dog park. I mean, I am, I'm doing fun things, but it's I'm I'm trying to really get more comfortable with the stillness of being by myself and I'm wondering what that is about you know yeah what came up for you from the the image and and like did you get a little bit more clarity around well it, I, it, in the in the image you know as you were talking I really I felt very comfortable I felt very relaxed and it was the first time because, you know, I'll go over to the beach and it's like, okay, so now I'm at the beach. I can check that box off, you know, but it, it, the, the hypnotherapy really, I was really relaxed and calm. And it's like, I was okay with being by myself. I was okay with the stillness and not being productive or active or engaged with other people. And uh, so that felt good because I, I, sometimes I wonder, you know, I, I feel like I'm frenetic because I have to be productive. I have to be doing something, you know, and uh, because then I feel guilty, like, oh my gosh, if I'm just sitting at the beach reading a book, really, that's okay to do, you know, so yeah, it's, uh, it's being comfortable with, the, with uh, the stillness, I think. That's what I'm, that's what I really need to work on. Okay, so that was what came around this concept mm -hmm. of being comfortable with stillness and mm -hmm. not always doing. Right. Okay. So that's what we'll do. And then, Justin, what about you? Oh, hold on. I have you on mute. <laughs> oh, poor okay. Justin. Unmuted. Okay. Uh, yeah, so sorry, I missed part of it, but the thing that came up for me initially was I was in a recording studio and uh, I was really impatient. Uh, so like going even deeper with that was like, what is the core problem? 
Like, what is it that my soul really needs? What is it that I really want? And where I felt like I was getting impatient is the fact that I felt like I had done so many things today. I felt like I had, you know, I went down to San Diego, I got back, I'm on this call, I'm doing emails, I'm ordering for this presentation that I have. It's like I'm juggling so many things all the time, but for whatever reason, it always feels like it's not enough. And I'm like, what does my soul need? What does my body need? What, is my, what do I need to feel that I'm just enough? And because I feel like I'm not enough, I'm really impatient. So like patience and being in this place that's supposed to bring me joy, which is a recording studio, a place where I can use my voice, I can use my gifts, I can use my talents, um, I can record that and then share those gifts with the world. It still feels like it's not enough. Yeah. So that's what came up for me. So this concept that it sounds like, let me tell me if I'm getting this right. The thing that wants healing is you don't want to keep feeling like it's not enough. Like you want to feel like what you're doing is enough. Yeah. Cause it's really exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm going to, I think we're going to definitely go 30 minutes past the next hour because I want to make sure we go deep with these topics. And now I'm kind of juggling three different topics, but I think we can do this. This will be good. I see um, um, a, a parallel between all three topics. Oh yeah, go ahead. But I just want to check in first. Is everyone okay going 30 minutes past the hour, the next hour? Okay, good. Yeah, what's the parallel that you see? I mean, mine is like trusting in myself and not feeling like I was enough in relation to meeting these people who I saw as like this, you know, highbrow um, Hollywood people. Um, for Gloria, she feels like, is it okay to rest? Like, is it, am I enough so that, am I enough that I'm allowed to rest? And for Justin, it's like, he's doing all these things, but still doesn't feel like enough. So I feel like the big, big umbrella is like, is it enough for me to be okay with myself so that I can rest right. so that I can That's feel good, good about my recording so that I can feel good uh, around these Hollywood people who I think are better than me, but real. So yeah, I think enoughness is like, yeah, enough. I wrote that down too. I wrote enoughness. Okay. Yeah. As you were talking, I was like, yeah, okay. Enoughness. And so, um, yeah, let's go with that. And I'll just share a little bit of like my experience with enoughness. And I, by no means, I'm like 100% there, but just in hearing um, kind of the through line with all three of your stories, like one around with other people and like always wondering like, what do these people want from me? Like, what the heck? Like, why are they, why are they texting me? Why are they following me on social media or like feeling guilty for resting or feeling impatient? Like you're just juggling things all the time. It's like, that comes from somewhere. And so like, for me, that came from my mom, you know, my mom was very much like she, she very much carried that like not enough kind of energy. And um, even growing up, you know, I could come home with like a 99 on a math test and everyone else could have gotten like 65 or like 80s. And so I'm really proud because I have like the highest score. And so I would bring it home and my mom, like the first thing my mom would say is, why didn't you get a hundred? Or like, why did you lose a point? And so, and this is like what, nine years old or something, you know, or just all throughout elementary and middle school. And so my programming has been like, always look for where I'm missing, you know, um, to Kat's story my mom and my sisters kind of not on purpose, but programmed in me that other people are not safe. And I don't know if it's a Filipino thing, or like a Filipino gossip thing, but like, um, you know, it's always like, again, they didn't like explicitly teach me other people are not safe, but like from watching them and observing them, I, I distinctly remember one time my sister, my older sister, well, they're all older, but the el oldest one, we we're about to like go into some party with like other Filipino people or whatever. And she was like, I'm going to show you how to, how to pretend that you like people, even when you really don't. And I think she was like being catty and sassy, like for herself, but I was young and hearing that I was just kind of like, I think I really took that on. Um, and my mom and my sisters were always like having these conversations about what do you think they really meant? Or, you know, what do you think who they like, 
what do they really want from you or what are they trying to get from you? So, and definitely the programming around men just want sex, men just want this, like you need to protect yourself, not just from my family, but like just society as a whole. So um, that's kind of my background story with that as well. But like to get over that, it's really just a practice of being enough. But I'm going to guide everyone through like a journaling exercise and then we're going to share afterwards and then we'll, we'll get to some solutions or some next steps for us. Um, so I have a timer here and there's like six questions. So there's going to be kind of a lot of writing or however much writing. Um, but the reason why like getting this enoughness in check is because, you know, you're tired, you're, you know, Justin, he's running around doing all this stuff and never feeling enough. So it's like, he could be running around all day long. Like that's exhausting. Like he said, and then Gloria, you're like not able to enjoy fully, like fully enjoy rest and relaxation. And even like this beautiful beach that you're at, mm -hmm. you know, and Kat, I think, and, I'm just saying like my perception of it, but obviously adjust it for you. But it's like, it feels like when you're able to be enough and trust yourself, then you'll really be able to enjoy these like social experiences instead of like always wondering like, what do you mean? What do they mean? You know? Um, so yeah, let's move towards healing with that. So with the topic being enoughness, and I think... I'll let everyone just kind of define that for themselves based on your particular situation. So rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 on where you're at as it relates to feeling enough. And I'm just going to go down. You don't have to share now because there's going to be a few questions. So this will just be like writing. So the first one is rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 in terms of feeling enough. And then the second question, and I'm just gonna keep going and then if anyone needs me to like stop because they need to still write, then just say stop and then I'll stop. But the second question is, In times that you did feel like you were enough, what was so great about it? Maybe you could think of like a moment or like a project or an event. Can you repeat that? You said, when did you feel enough? In yeah, in, in times that you did feel like enough, what what was so great about it? Okay. And you can describe what that experience was like. <sighs> and you can even describe like the experience that was happening. And I'll give a full minute for you to answer that. Take another 20 seconds or so, wrap up your last couple sentences. And then the third question is, where are you blocked around feeling like you are enough. 
it can be like in specific situations. So it can be like maybe with money, with dating, with, you know, social situations. Um, and you can just do like a bullet point list if that makes sense for you. So the third question is where are you blocked around being enough? And I'll give you another minute to answer that one. While I close this door, because children are screaming outside. Take another 10 or 15 seconds to wrap up your thought there. And the fourth question is, how do these blocks around enoughness manifest and show up in your life? And so you can expand on the example that you gave. So like, you know, with Kat, you know, you meet some new people at this cool thing, but the, all this anxiety, social anxiety kind of comes up. Um, just in your example is like, you're doing all this stuff, but you're running around juggling all these things and it still doesn't feel like enough. Gloria, you're, you're at this beautiful beach and you're supposed to be relaxing, but it's, you feel guilty about it. Um, some other examples are, you know, you get paid for, your work, but for some reason just doesn't feel something about it is not enough or you go out on a date, but something about it is not enough or, you know, just different examples on how these specifically, how this feeling of not enough enoughness specifically manifests and shows up in your life. So take a minute to answer that one. Take another 20 seconds or so to wrap up those thoughts. And I just wanna pause there. Whoa, did you drop something? Um, sorry. Oh, every time I unmute you, it's always this like explosive sound. Um, I just wanted to pause there. There's two more questions left, but I just wanted to check in. Am I going too fast or are you get is some good stuff? No. Good stuff is coming out. Okay, good. Um, okay, so then the next question is looking at your answers to all of these things, how does this relate to your family of origin? Another way to think about that is how does how does this relate to like what you were taught growing up? So that's the, the next question. And I'll give you a minute to answer that. Actually, I'll give you a minute and a half because family of origin usually.
take about 30 seconds to wrap that up. And then the last question is, how does this show up in other areas of your life? So pick, pick one area that you really want to transform in your life. So whether it's work, career, or business, or romantic relationships and dating, or money, Pick one area that you really want to transform in your life and see how all these answers are um, relating to how it shows up in that area. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions about that one? I'm a little confused. Um, you said, how does, how does this show up in other areas of your life and we're choosing one area of our life? Yeah, choose one area that you really want to transform. So that's like like an area of focus for you, I guess. So it's like it, it could be money and finances. It could be job and work. It could be career and business. It could be dating and relationships. But like pick, pick an area that you really want to transform and then journal a little bit about how this theme of enoughness, this, oh. all these answers have been affecting that area. In your life okay um. it's like connecting the dots and I'll give you all a minute and a half again to answer that one does that help you though Kat a little bit. Do you, what's your question? I think I just need to reread a few things and then I'll get it. But. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing is jumping out at me. Where do I want to transform? You know, what aspect? I mean, you know, all, the, all, the only thing I can think of is balance. Maybe that's 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 what's what's coming out for me. Well, last week you talked a lot about dating and relationships. Yeah, yeah. I would pick that one for you because that's the one. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. That's a, that's a whole, that's like a, that's a book in itself. That's not a question. I don't know. That's a. I mean. A, I don't know. It's up to you. That's yeah. just an invitation. I mean, when it's my turn to talk, I'm going to, I'll, I'll, I'm going to give you my, my spiel, but, but what, so I, I have the word dating in, in little writing over here in the corner, but I have a big word that I want to talk about. Okay. When, when, when we get there. So, All right. okay. But I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> I'll give a, does that, is 30 seconds enough for everyone to write, write on this? Okay. Take another yeah. 30 seconds. Okay, go ahead and wrap up your last sentences. And then um, I'd like to give everyone like, and I'll time it, I'd like to give everyone like two minutes to kind of share. So don't feel like, like you don't have to like read the whole thing, but you know, maybe take a sec right now to just look over your responses and then um, 
and then let me know when you want to share and then I'll I'll put two minutes on the clock and um, and just share kind of like what's it, what you feel is really most important to share and what maybe you want to get some support on. So who would like to go first? Um, so we're going through step all questions one to six and just sharing each one or just what stands out to well, us? Well, you have two minutes to share. So whatever stands out to you, like any aha moments, any insights, oh. um, and anything that you see like, oh, I could use some support in this area. Okay. Well, I'll just go. Um, so number one, I put, um, I rated myself like 5.5 .5 out of 10, like how I feel about myself. Um, my goal was to be able to enjoy myself in like social situations um, and how I see myself, how I interact with other people. Um, I, I really enjoy that you asked when was a time that you felt good so we can kind of like figure out the, what was the secret sauce to that and what worked about that and try to see if it can apply to everything else. Um, the situation where I felt really good was when I filmed a makeup tutorial for this character from the Haunted Mansion ride at Disneyland. Um, and I had eat, like really bad acne at the time. And normally I will not even film a video if I have really bad acne. But, and I was like so worried about like, why am I even gonna film this? You know, I look like a hot mess. But as soon as like everything was there, like the camera was set up, it was just me and my studio. I, I got like extremely excited and there was like no doubt, like there was no, none of those voices that are like, oh, what if it's not good enough? What if blah, blah, blah. I was just excited. Like I felt good. I was, it, even though like the sun was coming up and I was supposed to film at night, I, everything that normally just shuts me down, I was just like, I'm so excited to perform and be this character. And I knew that I'd worked hard for it and I knew it wasn't going to be perfect, but I was just excited. And so I just rode that wave. Mm -hmm. So that's, the one time I, or not the one time, but the most recent time I felt like I was doing something that normally gives me anxiety, which is makeup on myself or other people. And I, I felt like enough despite all the hurdles that were happening. Um, you asked where are you blocked around feeling you are enough? For me, it's like as a makeup artist, I'm doubting my skills. I'm doubting my time management and speed and being able to be fast enough. Um, I'm doubting how I carry myself in my professionalism, especially when I work at Sephora, which is a makeup retail store. Um, and that usually shuts me down. It, it, and the fourth question was like, how does that manifest? It's led to me um, having embarrassing appoint makeup appointments at Sephora, um, embarrassing moments under my own name as a freelance makeup artist. It's manifested in when I meet like new guys that I, I want to date they usually feel like really criticized or overwhelmed by how anxious I'm acting or they often tell me I'm overthinking or I talk too much or I'm too sensitive. And there's like issues with that. But the fact that they're all saying that is like, Oh, okay. There's something that, you know, mm. I could work on. Um, it makes me doubt new friends and networking people sometimes and wonder if they're malicious or, or not worth my time and just all the, all these thoughts. Um, it leads to procrastination because I've, oh, I'm overwhelmed. And then I become a sad slug and I do nothing. Mm -hmm. and, then, and so that was... What it came out for you about the whole family of origin thing? That... Sorry, it's loud. Um, oh, that's okay. I, I thought about that. my parents, as much as I love them, I'm like, I guess a lot of it came from here. Um, they would always rush in the morning, even if it, we were going to a party or something that's supposed to be fun. There's never a relaxed way to start a day. It was always like, you have to rush, you have to be early to be on time. Um, my parents don't really like having friends because they saw friends as like burdens because friends need things. Friends need favors. Friends can fight with you, you know, when things go wrong and then there's drama and drama is bad. And so my parents are kind of like very isolated and they just don't really have that many friends and they like it that way. And my sister and I didn't really like that growing up, but now I can see myself becoming like that from getting jaded just because certain friendships didn't quite stay perfect or stay the same mm -hmm. um, I feel like my mom was very critical of like me and my sister who we dated was never enough um, even the people we weren't dating were never enough um, <laughs> the random men on the street were always like predators and they were like sometimes they were staring at us in like really creepy ways but 
that got ingrained to my head that like people are threats, pe strangers on the street are threats. Um, she would be critical of like our friends, you know, and sometimes these friends were not good friends, but um, I feel like there's just a lot of criticism. And I guess I've, I carried that in a way that I'm, I decided it's, it's good to be paranoid about like everyone and everything, especially new things to protect myself when really at this point as a young adult or an adult, I'm like sabotaging um, what could be good new experiences. Yeah. And then for the last question, you said, how does, or what area I, my last answer was I want to work on how I see myself and how I interact with others. I want those things to get better. So I want to carry myself better. I want to be more confident when I interact with other people, even if I'm feeling not so great, I don't want to like, spit that out on the table every time I meet someone new and have them be like, Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah. What, um, what do you think is the breakthrough from all this journaling? Like what's um, the breakthrough, the new aha, the new realization for you? Um, I think at the beginning of this, um, healing circle, I was very focused on this, this Hollywood group of people that I met, but right now I'm like, oh, it's me again. Like, uh, this is like my baggage that I've carried around as a kid and it doesn't change. Like they are what they are, but it was reflecting back to me, part of my self, because this has happened with all kinds of new interactions I've had. Um, and I think the big aha moment is being like, I'm not necessarily like completely wrong. Like there's a reason I'm very cautious because I want to be sacred with whose energy I give to and what energy I let in, but I'm like overdoing it and not owning parts where I have more power than I really think I do. Um, where do you think, where are the parts you think you have more power? Um, Oh, I had an answer and it, and it, it, it floated away, but it sounded good when I said it. Um, I don't know. I'm all I can think of is, you know, with this Hollywood, I'm just going to call them this Hollywood group of people that I met. I started thinking like, okay, how am I going to up my makeup game in a week? Cause they want to do shoot with me so that I pass their test and I'm good enough as a makeup artist. And that made me feel like bad about myself. Cause I was like, if I want to up my game magically in a week why why am I waiting to meet this group of people to do it why didn't I already want to do that for myself and so um I think that's me that was an example of me giving away my power and waiting for someone to want to test me instead of just making myself better um yeah like at my my day job at Sephora I feel like I was waiting for like the big certification test that they give to makeup artists to decide that I'm going to freak out and then pass the test and then for them to tell me, okay, you passed and you're good enough. Like you're waiting I, for someone to. Yeah. And I passed that test and I didn't feel good about it. And so what does that say? You know, it's like, it's never enough because I don't believe in myself and people can say I'm good or bad and it's not going to matter except yeah. when they say I'm bad, like, yes, you did mess up. I feel even worse. So it's just like, I carry around my trauma as if I've already been hurt again. And it's what not you, helping me. What do you think it was about that haunted mansion and other moments that you did feel? Because all of that stuff was like, none of this stuff changed. But for whatever reason, you felt good there. Like, even like you said, the acne, all that. Like, what do you think it was from you? Like, what did you do? Or um, I think the magic sauce in when I was filming that tutorial was I accepted that I knew it wasn't going to be perfect. And that there were going to be things that I would look back on and wish I didn't have acne or, or the makeup was a little bit caked there or whatever. Um, the moment I just accepted that that was okay and it was still going to work out is what like released me from all this like, but what if, what if, what if? Um, and I just like flowed with it and I like rode the wave of creativity. And when I was done, like I was exhausted because I, I definitely like over filmed, but, um, do you yeah, ever, I apply? Hmm? Can, can I ask you a question? Do you ever yeah. feel like that you have to be perfect? All the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think, I mean, we could talk about this for a really long time and I want to get to other people, but, um, what I want, what I invite you to sit with, like, is 
because here's, and this is for everyone, there, there's a difference between transformation and breakthrough. So the breakthrough is like the, like you come to circles like this to have a breakthrough, or you go to, you know, retreats and events and conferences to have a breakthrough. And that's like the thing, the aha moment, the new realization, the deeper understanding, you know, that quote that you see on Instagram that you're like, oh my gosh. But that does not equal transformation. Transformation requires consistent and persistent practice. So you have the breakthrough, but then you actually have to, you know, it's like going to the gym, you know, you're not going to build muscle from like lifting a weight one time. Like, oh yeah, like you have to actually go multiple times. And so what I'm seeing here, my invitation to you, and then I'll check back in at the end if we have time but like the antidote to all of this like anxiety and stuff is acceptance you know you said it it's like accepting whatever it is and then that acceptance opens you up to you said flow and creativity but then I also wrote the words trust and joy um because I think that's also what it was because I even remember about the haunted man like even even your posts about it there's so much joy like it, 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 it's like, yeah, I'll just say that. Yeah. Um, so acceptance will then open you up to flow and creativity and trust and joy, but you got to practice it, you know, and it's like, you got to kind of have this, um, you got to like call yourself out on it when it happens. And it's like, for example, with this Hollywood group, right? It's like, there wasn't access to acceptance or trust or joy or creativity or flow. It was because it there's like just all this hypercritical stuff, and then also like there a lot of this was impacted from your parents. So with shit like that, we just have to like reparent ourselves. Like you know, adult cat has to like tell like inner child cat like this isn't how it is. This isn't this, it isn't true. You know, one piece for me was like around accepting and believing that there are available and trustworthy men. And I realized that when I was dating, for most of while I was dating, I didn't have that belief. And that definitely came from my mom, you know, that men just want this, blah, blah, like men are predators, all of that stuff. I had to practice the belief. I had to like tell myself every day, like I'm going to walk around in this world and prove to myself that there are good, available, nice men. Mm -hmm. And I started with like my brothers. And then I started with my guy friends and like, and then eventually I had a strong enough muscle that I could take that into dating. That's just like an example. And so it's like, maybe these Hollywood people came into your life as an opportunity for you to practice that. So I'll leave you with that. I'll let you noodle on that um, while we hear from. Okay. Also, sorry if I took up. Oh. A- way more than two minutes so that's okay it was for everyone I I um I was looking at the time and I yeah okay. I felt I felt everyone needed to hear everything so <laughs> um who wants to who? go next Justin do you want to go someone can go next um, oh. after them okay I'll okay. you do you want to okay. go yeah, I, yeah I'll go okay so I rated myself on um, feeling enough um, between a six and a seven. And uh, because I, I, I do feel that, I don't want to use the word frenetic, but I feel that I am uh, constantly making sure that I am productive, you know, that I'm doing things, that I'm not just sitting or, um, or you know, I, I, maybe I judge too, because what I consider doing might be different from what another person considers doing i think i told you i don't know i was kind of joking last time but my mantra for 2019 is not everybody has to be gloria because (laughs) i have a certain standard i have a certain expectation of what a quality life is for me for me and you might have a totally different viewpoint i think i told you i have friends my age who are retired and they really enjoy uh, shopping and uh, you know going out to dinner, and I do it like that too. But I like to be—I like to have a little bit more of a, a challenge to me 
you know, I, I feel that a quality life means that I am growing, evolving and transforming or whatever. There, there, there has to be a purpose. So I play tennis and I take art classes and I go to plays and I, and I volunteer at the hospital. So I, I, that is my definition of a quality of life. And so I have decided that not everybody has to be Gloria, but I am going to be Gloria. And that is what I do. So as far as that enough part, the, the, it's a six or a seven because I feel that maybe, all right, so I'm taking an art class you know, maybe I should take music, you know, because I used to take music. So there's always something else that I could be doing or should be doing. So that was number one. Number two, oh, a time when I did feel really good, I felt balanced. It was a day where I, I went to a museum. I uh, went for a bike ride. I took my dog to the dog beach. And then I sat at the beach and read. And that night, I slept great. I, I felt very good about myself and about the day, that there was balance, that it wasn't, it wasn't all work. And, and I felt proud. I, there was, there was, I took pride in, in what I had done that day. And where am I blocked? Well, you know, we, we have to go back to the dating thing. <laughs> because I do feel that I stay safe. I don't put myself out in the dating world because I think it's too hard or too risky. There's no guarantee. I like to feel that when I am in a challenging situation, that the outcome or the result is positive or successful. That is me. So dating, there's that risk of, you know, again, maybe I'm not pretty enough, maybe I'm too old, too tall, too fat, too thin, too whatever. So, you know, that fear of rejection has uh, made it so that I may make a choice to say, okay, I'm not going to enter the dating world then. Oops, wait a minute. I <laughs> lost you. Am I back? Yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not entering the dating world. Um, okay, so that was number three. How did these blocks show up? Well, you know, I guess it, it's the same thing. The, the, what I do is I block out the blocks, you know, so they're not a part of my life. So I have all this going on. Mm. I just don't, I just don't have that going on. And I'm okay with that. I am satisfied. What did I write there? I am satisfied. Oh, I can't read my writing. My life is full. I feel fulfilled. Wow. I don't know. I don't well, know so are you saying you don't, you don't want to go there with the dating right now? Well, you know, it, it, no, no. And, but it's, it's, I don't want to go with the dating because it's because it's that it's that block where if my choice is if my choice is you know okay Friday night I'm going to you know a mixer with I don't know do they have mixers anymore I'm gonna to go to a, a singles bar okay I'm gonna to go to a singles bar and and stand around and blah 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 or I'll you know go walk my dog or I'll watch TV or I'll read. I am going to not do the singles bar. I'm not. So you mentioned, and you mentioned this a few times, you mentioned this last week as well as this week, this concept of staying safe and right. things are too risky, too hard. Um, is that where you want to stay? Well, okay. Let me, let me say this. I think, you know, I think, you know, I have a lot of successful areas of my life. Like I wrote down, you know, I was good in school. My career is good. My, I have great relationships with friends and family. I definitely have service to others. And I think because I have been successful in all that area, I feel very fulfilled. 
when I look at dating and my track record, picking men is not good. And then my, my fear about, you know, trusting men and what do they want? And I don't know, if, uh, look at him or black, you know, I'm too judgmental. So I say, you know what? I'm happy because I don't have a control of the outcome and my gut reaction or my shoulds my shoulds from growing up, the messages from my father was that, you know, the boys are only after one thing. They're not to be trusted. And then my father would say, you know, Gloria, you're just too sweet. You're too sensitive. You're too trusting. They'll take advantage of you. So don't date, don't get married. Boom. And I bought that package. I bought, that. <laughs> I bought the package. I well, did. I you know, I mean, it's a lot to dive into like you know with kind of 10 minutes left and yeah but i am offering to challenge yourself to to noodle in about it even more because it was brought up last week and i can even it's like it's something you really want i can feel it and it's okay if you that's why i asked like it you know do you want to stay here do you want to stay playing it safe and you have every right to choose that, but I would invite you to challenge yourself yeah. because there, you've accomplished so many things that are super scary to other people that are too risky or that maybe once was risky. And, yeah, you know, I think there's something there for you. So. All right. Okay. Because everything else is pretty full. I mean, you know, even last time you said your your physical health is great, friendship, yeah. service. So it's like this is kind of the one thing, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a, it's a big one thing. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. So there's, I, but I think the key here is definitely like love yourself fiercely through it all and know that like you're not alone. Like it is terrifying. It's hard out here in the streets. You know, we got cat walking around in Hollywood getting cat called every two minutes. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> um, I know, I know. It's, 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 you, you know, it's, Justin's a dude and he can even attest it's hard out here in these streets. <laughs> um, so I invite you to soften yeah. into. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Justin. Really? I feel like every time. <laughs> You know, it would be helpful if I could see your face, Justin, because then I won't unmute you if you're like talking. So I unmute you because I want to check in on you. Okay, he wasn't even listening. <laughs> okay, so I unmute you a lot of times because I want to check in on you because I can't see your face. And then when I can't see your face, I unmute you and it's always like this really loud sound that like shocks me. So, Sorry, it's really bad. It echoes really bad here. I know, but you're also on the phone and doing other stuff. So if I could see your face, then I'll know, like, not to unmute you. <laughs> okay. but, I'm ready if you need me to go. We're wrapping up with Gloria, and then you can go. Um, okay, cool. So I think my invitation to you, Gloria, is to just kind of soften into this, love yourself fiercely through this process, and maybe do some journaling, some more okay. journaling. How does yeah. that feel? I lost you. Wait a minute. Oh, you're back. Yeah. yeah no, I, I, I will do that. I yeah. Will do yeah. Yeah. I'm pushing I you because I love you. <laughs> I know. I know. And like, Thank you. and I know you want it. Like, I can feel it. We can all feel it. <laughs> well, you know, you know, when you think about it, to, to, um, it's, it's almost like it's a resignation. It's like, it's mm -hmm. like saying, well, I'm happy enough, you know? And just the fact, if you say it like that, well, I'm happy enough, that means that there's a little resignation there, right? So I, I don't- not a resignated kind of lady. No, right, right. Well, and so actually- I don't want it to be, you know, like the, 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 my final decision about dating is, well, I'm fine without it. I yeah. don't want to say it like that. Well, you know, I actually want to put this mirror up to you because earlier you said not everyone has to be Gloria. Right. And there is a little bit of a 
judgment, if you will, on people that just want to do the, so it's, it's almost like they're mirroring you. Not exactly, but like you're noticing of their resignation around like being more of service or be challenging yourself more is kind of like a mirror. Like you're kind of noticing your own resignation, but as it relates to dating. Interesting. Yeah. Something to, something to, to noodle on, but that's a, that's a big one. That's a big bite to, to chew on. So I'll leave you with that. And then we'll, we can keep exploring in the next weeks. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. It's a big one. So we want it. We want to tread lightly. We want to go gentle, but, um, you, you recognize it. So that's, that's good. Yeah. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Justin, I am unmuting you. Please do not drop anything at this time. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Okay. Hello. Hi. Your turn. Okay. Um, So what I felt like when that was happening was, you know, um, when it was a good feeling was everything was done, nothing went wrong. Everybody's needs were met by either me or somebody else. Um, It felt like I had went the extra mile and outshined everyone um, and got rewarded for it. Um, I was told at some point that I was loved and there was no more problems that existed. That's what it felt like when it's good and when it's in the moment. What'd you Um, rate yourself? Five. And uh, so how that shows up is um, it shows up in my fitness. It shows up financially. uh, It shows up with you know, talents. So it's always like an up and down, right? When fitness is good, it's good. I've been to the gym four to six times a week. Um, I'm eating right. It's good. Um, And then somehow it stops, you know, then I don't work out for a whole week or two weeks or three weeks. And then I feel gross. I feel guilty, shameful. Um, Same thing with finances. You know, I get a bonus check. I'm good. All the bills are paid. And then, you know, stuff goes by. And next thing you know, I got $80 in my account. And so it's paycheck. And then it's stressful and when I'm, you know, living on the edge for until that next one comes in. Uh, and the same thing goes for my talents. It's like I take all these classes, I do all this work, and then I realize, like, I still have so much further to go. Um, so it just always feels like it's never enough. Like, it's always, um, and it's always, it's always up and down. You know, it's never, like, consistent or it's never, never, like, you know, it's always a crazy windy road. Where did you learn that from? Uh, yeah, so that comes from, I think it comes from fear of my mother. Uh, fear of your mother? Yeah, like the fear that she has is projected onto me. Like how she fears everything in life, like that gets projected onto me. And so like it's a constant struggle. It's a constant, uh, we're about to go broke, but oh, we just made it. Um, so yeah. And the thing that I wanted to work on was like, the place I wanted to be with is the fitness area. Cause like for years, like I've been doing all kinds of fitness things. I feel like, um, you know, I start new diets, stop new diets, try all these different products, go to all these different gyms. And I'm still like the same freaking size <laughs> and it's exhausting. Um, and it's like, uh, the thing that I really want to focus on is just my overall health. It's like my hip is always really tight. Um, you know, I always want to go to the chiropractor and I go for months and then, you know, something happens. It could be the universe brings on the fact that my flexible swimming account won't pay for it anymore. I get a new insurance, like something will come up to prevent me from going. Right. And then, um, I go for months of not going and then, you know, and then my neck hurts, my back hurts. And it's like, it's, I think the thing that's driving all that is this belief or this fear that like something's going to happen to screw it up. You know, it's not abundant. Like, it's very scarce. Um, like, the other shoe will drop. Yeah. So, and I think all of that is just, I think it's just running off of a fear. And what are the thoughts, like, what are your um, common thoughts when you think about your fitness or even, like, as you're setting up to go to the gym or as you're setting up your schedule? Like, what are the thoughts you're having? What are you telling yourself? Well, for a long time, it was like, I have to work out like I'm in the fight of my life. Like I'm working out like I am the heavyweight champion of the world. And if I don't work out like that, all this training means nothing. 
so it's it's it would be like a really extremely hard workout that would make my body extremely sore uh push me to the hardest limit and it's like i don't need to do that because i'm not the heavyweight champion of the world I'm, i don't i don't i'm not competing i'm not doing anything i'm doing this for my health so it's like i push myself way too hard yeah i wrote down that this is this concept of black and white thinking and yeah, yeah. maybe everyone can relate to that but it's usually something that we're taught, you know, we're taught mm -hmm. whether literally or like infer inferred by our family of origin, but we're taught at this black and white thinking, like if I'm not freaking training for a marathon, then I'm being like a lazy slug, you know? And it's like, that's absolutely not true. And back to the point about breakthrough versus transformation, really changing this is going to require practice from you. And it's like, and for everyone, I think w since we're all dealing with like enoughness, it has to be gentle and it has to be loving. Like, I want you to think of the image of like a little baby learning how to walk, right? When a little baby or toddler is learning how to walk and they fall, are you like, you dumbass? Like, <laughs> cat likes that one. <laughs> but right, it's like, they're not thinking, like, you're not like, you dumbass, maybe you just shouldn't walk, you know? You're right. going to encourage them. You're going to be like, oh, good job, you know? Like, you're, maybe you'll make fun of them, but it'll be, like, all love. Like, you know, they say, like, babies are, like, basically drunk adult, little tiny drunk adults, you know? Mm. Um, but I think the desire is to, like, shift this, like, okay, now I see it, so now I just want to stop doing that. And so it's like tomorrow you might be like, you know, like Kat, you might be in a social situation and be like, oh my God, I'm doing that thing. Don't do that thing, you know, or Justin, you'll be like, I'm doing that thing. Like, don't do that thing. Like, that's not really going to work. And that's not really going to support you in the long run. It's like, it's got to be, and Kat, you actually said it that, you know, the antidote is acceptance. So first you got to be like, dang, I'm really hard on myself. Or like, I have this black and white thinking, or I have this fear and scarcity mindset. And I think, or, you know, I have this fear that, you know, dating is too hard and too risky and that <laughs> men are dangerous. Instead, like, it, it's like develop a curiosity for these things, these fears, and get to know. These things. Because these things are parts of you that, need attention and because you keep making it wrong it's it's that little kid that's not getting attention so give it some attention um my favorite way of looking at it is like inviting it in for tea you know and just be like all right what what do you need <laughs> you know like 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 for me when i um when i was having like this just I realized I had this huge fear of men. I just was like, men are terrifying. I'm just absolutely terrified of them. And I would try to like be brave then, like trust and like whatever, but like white knuckling and muscling through doesn't really work. So I had to really sit down with like the part of me that's like, men are terrifying. Like you can't trust them. And like actually have a conversation with that part. And the way that I like to do it is like by journaling, you know, so it's like, I'll write A for Amelia and then whatever the, the name of the part is. So you can be like F for fear or, you know, N E for not enough, like whatever. And you just kind of be like, or you could even ask that part, like, what should I call you? You know, sometimes the parts of me are like sassy and they'll be like, call me sad Sally or whatever. No, that's never been a part, but I'm just saying like, it can have a name um because it's just a part that wants a seat at the table and if you give it a seat at the table then it won't keep popping up and like sabotaging you so how does that resonate for you justin story of my life <laughs> um i don't know it just reminds me to slow down like stop going so fast stop uh, well, the other so word, a, wor a word that comes to my mind, Justin, is the word should. You seem to live with the word should kind of over your head. Like you should work mm -hmm. out five times. You should, you know, save money. You should, should, should. And th there's all these shoulds that you feel 
you're judging yourself because you're not able to maintain that. But mm. you just, but it's that should. So, you know, the, the expression is don't. Sh yeah. <laughs> we lost you again, Gloria. Um, and I think actually the antidote for all of you, because there was this theme of rushing for everyone. And so the antidote really is slowing down, like slowing down long enough to get to know yourself a little better. And these are parts that you're not so proud of, like the part that's always anxious and um, uh, what's the word? Cautious of people or like overly cautious of people or the part that no matter how much you do is never enough, that fear um, or Gloria, where did you go? We lost you. Oh, you're there. I can hear us, but. Oh, wait. Yeah. I wonder if she like dropped off, but anyway, the, the theme that I'm, oh yeah, she did. Oh no. She'll probably dial back in. We're about to wrap up though, so I hope she comes back soon. But yeah, I think the theme is slowing down. Um, and I relate to that. I got, I definitely, people were rushing a lot growing up and that affects a child because children were just like kind of at the beck and call of these like big human beings. And if they're just like constantly dragging us around, that affects our sense of self-worth. So it's like, love yourself enough to slow down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just to piggyback off, cause I do this too, Justin, but it almost feels like when you said I should slow down, it's almost like you haven't, you were still putting yourself down almost in that statement instead of like, I'm allowed to slow down or I can slow down. I um, yeah. should just like, oh, I should do this, but I'm not. And I'm mad at myself in this very moment for that. Like, I, I don't, this is not really off topic, but there's some um, cultures and languages, they don't even have the word should because it's either like is or isn't. I think it's only like English that has like that word because it's like a Western thing to like should have, could have, would have. Mm. So that's just a thought. No, that's it. I love that. That was a great point. How does that? land for you justin yeah no, that's good and i think it's a different way to operate just giving yourself permission to do something yeah like i get to slow down i deserve slowing down it's like think yeah. about seeing someone you really care about mm -hmm. rushing through something and they're like rushing and they're like cutting their hands up because they're like you know wouldn't you like lovingly be like hey 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 slow down like Mm -hmm. right. let me help you like you should slow down be like you're yeah you would you're exactly. allowed to slow down you deserve to slow down yeah yeah and I think cat that works like how do you find this thing of slowing down helps you in your situation um it definitely resonates for me like that everything I just said to Justin makes sense to me because I'm always I've had clients at Sephora say it's okay because they can see like my anxiety is like out just loud and out and it makes them uncomfortable, and then I'm uncomfortable that they notice that I'm uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah. I muted him. <laughs> okay. Ahead. Yeah, um, that's really the end of my thought is um, I'm always rushing, and I know I was, like, raised to be that way, but sometimes I'm it's my day off. Or maybe I'm just taking a stroll to, like, exercise or just to walk around the block, and I'm, like, power walking, and I'm, like, why am I sweating? Like, I'm supposed to be, like, <laughs> enjoying my day, like – um, so I'm always rushing because I feel like there's not enough time. I haven't done enough. I'm not enough. I need to be faster. I'm a procrastinator. So when I am being productive, I need to be a speed demon. So I'm just like, <sighs> but yeah. I think, I, yeah. And I think too, maybe that should itis is like, I like to call it sometimes is should like, it, it does feed into that bopping back and forth between procrastinating lazy slug and then rushing, shooting all over myself. Yeah, and it's like, I do think it is me trying to compensate because of the black and white thinking. thinking. Yeah. I'm either, as you know, a sad slug or I'm on top of the world super high on my own life. And when I'm high on life, I'm like, I have to go, I have to go. Because when I'm a sad slug again, I need to get as much as I can done for the next time I get depressed. Yeah. Um, that's, I know that's like I, not healthy, but I'm aware of it now. So I'm trying Being to aware of it is always like a great first step. And then I think, you know, just it's a practice like breakthrough versus transformation. Like just because you're aware of it, it's not going to transform overnight. Mm -hmm. And it's just, a, I wouldn't actually, this thought came to my mind and um, I'd love for you all to experiment with it. And then like, let me know how it goes next week or whenever else you're back on the circle. But like, like try experimenting going like way too slow. 
<laughs> but like not necessarily Walk. like in a com yeah not i mean you can do it comically just for fun but like not necessarily in a comical way but i think so that the thoughts that you think can come up clearer and then you can like reparent yourself through that you know what i mean because it's like if you find that you're like yelling at yourself like move faster bitch it's like whoa that's something to look at you know what i mean um okay. are you coming back here justin i don't know I'm, i muted him are you coming back yeah they're shutting down this oh oh yeah it closes at six okay yeah. okay see you soon um or see you still so you're gonna walk while you're doing this okay great um but yeah, I think just to really start to notice the thoughts, because like once we know the thoughts, then we can actually like interact with them and like reparent ourselves. Yeah, I think I tried that once because I noticed I rushed in the shower, and it's good to not take a long shower. But I was like anxious to the point I'm just like, and I was yeah, just like, like just slapping just yourself, and scrub my titty instead of like, <laughs> slow down. Why are you rushing? Like, and I noticed I couldn't do it. I was just like trying to like be slower scrubbing my arm and I was like why is this so hard because it's so ingrained and so something as simple as like taking a bath and being like you don't have to erratically wash your face and it's bad for your skin anyway yeah to like scrub it like so harshly yeah um, whoa <laughs> crossing worlds yeah <laughs> so I think no, it's like a little it's like a black mirror episode right oh, now. Well. <laughs> um yeah, well, I think the reason why we rush is because um, we're avoiding feeling something. There's something we're avoiding feeling, and you have to feel it, like, to go through it. So that's why I say slow down and, like, kind of see what comes up. Okay. I'm going to text Gloria, too, but I think that's, that's good for now. Do you want to – and Justin, can you join us for a final moment, final thought? to close it off. So we've talked a lot about a lot of really good stuff. I'm just going to kind of summarize everything. You know, we talked about where we needed support. We, um, talked, we found this common theme of like enoughness. And then also this common theme of kind of like rushing and needing to be busy. And it showed up differently for everyone, but like that contributed to like the lack of feeling enough. Um, and then we, we discovered the antidotes are really acceptance and um, balance was a word that came up and um, slowing down and like checking your black and white thinking as well as your should thinking. Um, and then another antidote slash solution was like getting curious about these parts of yourself that, um, that you're trying to avoid because when you get curious about them, you can learn more and it's part of self-love. You, you're getting to know a piece of yourself. So you're loving yourself more. Um, and then I love this, like I get to slow down. I deserve to slow down versus I should slow down. And then breakthrough versus transformation is all in the practice. So you're not going to transform tomorrow, but you can practice these little transformations. So with that recap, I would like everyone to share a final thought. Um, let's for, yeah, share a final thought and then I'll, I'll ask another question to really wrap it up. So any final thoughts, Kat? I mean, it's the last thing you just said, but it, I think that's going to be very helpful, helpful to me to slow down because just the other day, um, I think you were watching when I was doing my Instagram live and I was doing my gala makeup mm. and filming an actual, so there was like two cameras going on. I was like an hour and 30 minutes late. And before I even was setting up for that, I like tripped on a light and fell um, and like knocked a bunch of stuff over. Mm -hmm. And my first reaction was, I need to move faster because I just knocked something over. I have to get it back up. I'm even, and I was just like, oh. <laughs> first of all, it's not get electrocuted too. <laughs> Every time something erratic happens, instead of being like, I have to make up for it. Now it was just like, no, this means slow down so you don't trip again. And you fell in the first place because you need to slow down. So I like started reaching for the light and I, I like laughed maniacally. And then I was <laughs> like, and so that helped. And I didn't, I didn't trip on anything again or, or pull off the plug or mess up any lights. So that, that worked in that instance. And I feel like, yeah, I should shower slower, just be more mindful when I do things instead of constantly power walking everywhere. And yeah. Yeah. And that's a practice. So even that, like, 
Like that's a practice that I do because I have a rush complex as well. And I have to constantly like be like, oh my God, I'm doing that again. Okay. And then no I'll reason like, sometimes. like I'm yeah. going to the club and I'm stressed and I'm like, I'm like, why am I stressed? I'm going to a party. To yeah. Party. So slowing down. Justin, any final thoughts? Yeah. Come, um, come into the camera. Yeah. I was like just the, thinking like in regards to that is uh, enjoy being in the moment because all those crappy moments will get you to a great moment. Like last week was a perfect example of that. Like I had a lot of like just bad moments, but it led like to like a really high, like exciting end of the week. Um, and it makes me remember like, you know, I'm always in the future. If I'm always in the past, that's where the anxiety and all the fear comes from. But when I'm like in the moment, like present. right now, present, like I'm okay. Power of now. Yeah. Thank so you. It just like reminded me to practice. Um, and then the last question that I want to wrap it up, what were, what were one or two of your favorite moments from tonight's circle? Uh, just any moment where I had an aha moment. I know that's really vague, but I definitely, I had no expectations for this. I didn't even know what the topic was, but I feel like this is very helpful. And I feel like it did come full circle, like three solid times for me. Um, and also just, not that I enjoy seeing people suffer, but it's just very interesting how I forget that so many people don't feel like enough. And I convince myself very often that I'm just the one that's behind and I'm alone. But then I see like people like you guys who I see as like wildly successful and like amazing. I see other makeup artists who have like worked at the Grammys and they also have thought of throwing out their makeup kit. And I'm just like, oh, okay. So this is, you know, Maybe our we're all living in the struggle. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're just all really hard on ourselves very often. And it comes from a good place in the sense that we want so much for ourselves. We have high expectations, but we're also like suffering more than we have to. So, um, yeah, I guess my favorite part was just seeing that our, a lot of what we're dealing with is very similar to each other, that we're not alone and just, yeah, things coming full circle and being able to be, link it back to like childhood and, um, taking our power back and not just being like, well, let me talk about this group of people that really irritated me and blah, blah, blah. And being like, oh shit, like this is actually something okay. from within that I can work on. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I'm happy you said the part about like the community, like we're, you know, and that's the reason why I like hosting circles. Cause it's like, it's truly an opportunity for healing, even just being with other people and talking about stuff. So Thanks for mentioning that. What was one of your, one or two of your favorite moments? Yeah, along with that, Kat, uh, the moment that we realized there was a common theme. Um, and then also the moments where we were able to put a name to something, like the black and white thinking, uh, the not enough, the should, like just being able to name it. Because it's like sometimes I have a hard time explaining what it is, but when I have the name, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's the thing yeah um one of my favorite moments was um hearing everyone's like what what their imagery therapeutic imagery journey was like I liked hearing about Kat your flower field and then Gloria was the beach in Florida and then Justin was a recording studio that's why I love therapeutic imagery because like it's truly coming from your subconscious mind and the images that you see is like what is best for communication with your subconscious. So that was one of my favorite moments. Um, another one of my favorite moments was seeing the theme of the rushing with all of us and just a reminder to slow down. And I, I there was a point like maybe 20 or 30 minutes ago when I felt like there was definitely a lot of synergy and we were just like bouncing like ideas off of each other and like kind of like help really helping each other deepen and, and take it to the next level. So I don't remember exactly what that was, but it was like, people were just like, Oh, can I offer this? Or, Oh, what I'm I remember. thinking. Yeah. Were, like giving each other advice and people were actively listening. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So yay. Well, thank you so much. Um, I am just going to close off the recording, but thank you so much, Kat, for being here. Thank you, Gloria, for being here. I'm going to text you right now and just see where you're at. Thank you, Justin, for being our first masculine energy in the circle. We hope it's not the last time. And to those of you watching this recording, I hope this was helpful for you. I hope that you journaled right along with us. And um, as always, email me, let me know um, what you got out of this, ameliafortis.com slash contact. 
and I will talk to you all next week. Bye. Oh my God, how do I? <laughs>